Good day everyone. So for today, we're going to discuss first order differential equations. Under this particular type of DE, there are around 5 to 8 different ways or techniques as to how we're going to evaluate each type. Now for today, we will discuss separable differential equations. Now, any differential equation, when it is first order, can take the form dy dx being equal to a function of x and y, wherein on the left side of your dE, you only have the derivative of the unknown function, and then the rest of the expressions are on the right side. Or it could take the form m of x and y dx plus n of x and y dy equal to 0. Actually, this one, this form only came from this. How? If we cross multiply the differential of x here on the, to the right side of your equation, this function of x and y will now contain a differential of x and the dy will be separated on the left. If this function f of x and y multiplied to dx is transferred to the left, it will be something that looks like this. A, an equation which has two terms, one having the differential of y and the other having the differential of x. Now, a DE is said, super, is said to be separable when the terms that you have separated are readily integrable. The next question is what tells you that it's readily integrable? It's readily, readily integrable if the differentials that you have are multiplied to expressions having the same variable that appears on the differential. In the case here of the differential of x, the expression that is multiplied to it is an expression containing the x variable only. And in the case of the differential of y, the multiplied expression is in terms of the variable y only. Why? Because this is n of y. So, meaning only variables y could be seen with constants. And this is m of x, meaning there's only x variables present to this particular expression. Now, if this is the case, you can do integration and your DE is now said to be a first order separable differential equation. When your DE is written in this form in which the expressions multiplied to the differentials contains a mix of two variables or more, even more, the DE is not separable. It could be solved using the other techniques that we will be discussing later on. So let's look at two examples that will help you understand the technique of separating variables. So this is our DE, this is the derivative of y with respect to x. We want to move this differential of x to expressions that have s only and this differential of y will be moved or grouped together with expression containing y only. We can accomplish that by cross multiplying y squared minus y minus 1 here on the, to the left side and the differential of x to the right side. The resulting expression would be this one. If you notice, these two expressions are homogeneous in terms of the variables that appear on the differentials. Then, if that is the case, we can say that our DE part is halfway done already. Why? Because we have successfully separated variables together with the differentials. Now, we proceed to integration right after separation of variables. We apply the appropriate integration technique and this is our answer. Now, since we are dealing with indefinite integrals, we are supposed to write an arbitrary constant on the left and another arbitrary constant on the right. And since we have two arbitrary constants whose values are not specified, you can combine them into one arbitrary constant only 
which is the C that you are seeing here. We suggest and it is suggested that the arbitrary constant should always be written on the right side of the solution of your differential equation. So in our case now, y cubed minus 3y equal to x cubed plus 3x plus c is the solution of this given first order separable differential equation. Now, the second example will not only give you another way of attacking a first order separable differential equation, but also will present to you the concept of the implicit and the explicit solution. So, let's say we have this DE again. Its form is similar to the first one that was shown to you in the first slide. We want the differential of x to go with this and the differential of y to go with this. So cross multiplication will accomplish that for us. The resulting equation would be this one. We have successfully again separated variables because dy is grouped with the y expression and dx was grouped with the x expression only. You don't see any mix of variables x and y on these two differentials. Next now is your integral calculus. So you will have to recall the technique of integration appropriate. That way we will be able to come up with a solution of this DE. The solution of the given DE, this one, is this. And this particular type of solution for our differential equation this one is what we call as the implicit solution. Implicit in the sense that there are several terms that has the y variable or your unknown function on the left and the rest of the expression in terms of x and the arbitrary constant on the right. So that is the implicit solution of this particular differential equation. Now, you may wonder then what is the explicit or what do we call explicit solution? So, this same DE now that has this particular solution will have another solution we call explicit. Where do we get it from? We get it from the implicit solution. Our goal is we should only see a y on this side. One and only one term on the left side in terms of the unknown function or the dependent variable. Now, there is a tool in algebra that will help you accomplish that particular objective to this particular form of your solution. That tool is what we call as completing the squares. So, in the next slide, you will see that in order to complete the square of y squared minus 2y, we added 1 here. Where did we get the 1? This negative 2, we divide by 2 and we square the quotient. So, the answer is 1. Now, if you add 1 here, you are supposed to add 1 on this side as well. That way, you haven't altered your original solution. A 1 in the left side and a 1 on the right side would simply be representing the same solution, the same implicit solution presented in the previous slide. Now, this expression has this perfect square equivalent. Now, I want to isolate the y, so I need to get rid of the squared here or the exponent 2. So, I need to get the square root of the left side and the right side of this equation. If we do that, you will have the square root or the plus minus square root of the expression on the right. Note this class that I have changed the 1 plus c into a. Since your original arbitrary constant is c and you add some 1 to it, it should not be the same c that should appear here. It should be a different arbitrary constant whose value is equivalent to the sum of 1 plus c. 
So going back to now where we are, so if we take the square root, this would be the form of the left side of the DE. We got rid of the squared here. And if we transfer 1 to the right side, this is now the solution. So you're only seeing 1 and only 1 unknown function variable on the left. If this is the manner you write the solution of your DE, this is what we call as the explicit solution. Explicit in the sense that you have explicitly written the solution of y, the unknown function, or the dependent variable in terms of the independent, independent variable x. Now, if that same DE that we have discussed will be provided with an initial condition, so this is what we call an initial condition, that DE now specifically will be called an initial value problem. The DE that I'm referring to is this DE. So let's say for example, this DE is provided with this initial condition. What's the purpose of this? The purpose of y of 0 equal to negative 1 is for us to know the value of the arbitrary constant. So, we continue with the implicit solution form of our DE which contains the arbitrary constant. This 0 here represents the value of x and of course, for the y, we have negative 1. So, what we do, we substitute these two values to the form of our implicit solution. And that would give us a value for the C, which is 3. Now, from this form, we have now this particular implicit solution, which does not anymore contain an arbitrary constant. This is an implicit solution. What about if you will substitute this initial condition on the explicit solution? So, this is your explicit solution. This one was represented by A in the previous slide. If you substitute x equal to 0 and y negative 1 to this, it will give us an arbitrary constant value equal to 4. And as such, your explicit solution will not anymore contain any C. So, now you have specific constants in lieu of the arbitrary constants. Now, if your solution is written in this manner in which you have the C or in this manner in which you have the C sub 1, if the curves of this particular equation will be presented, it will look something like this. <coughs> Excuse me. We have several curves having the same shapes but different sizes. So, we say they are a family of curves representing the family of solutions that we have in here. Now, notice that the y here is negative 1. So, the y values are negative. So, in this family of curves, that particular curve represented by this is actually the black curve that you are seeing here. Now, what about if you're using x equal to 0 and y equal to 3? Since y is 3, it should be written or when plotted, we expect that it should be written on the upper part of the Cartesian plane. This solution, if I may say this explicit solution, when we substitute x equal to 0 and y equal to 3, to our explicit solution which has the C will yield a curve that is green colored in this family of curves. So this equation is represented by this green curve. If we see a C here, not a 4, then we will have this several family of curves to C representing the family of solutions of the given differential equation. Now, as to the concept of the particular solution, uh, we will have a different DE 
and it is provided with an initial condition and as such I may call this an initial value problem. We separate variables in such a way that dy goes with expressions of y and dx goes with expressions of x. We accomplish that and what we will have is this expression y goes down 1 plus 3y cubed goes up and the dx here goes here so it would be this the next is for you to distribute y on the expression you have on the left cosine of x times alone then process everything using integration now this ln of y plus y cubed equal to sine x plus c is the implicit solution of the given differential equation which we can call also as an initial value problem. Now if we substitute the condition here when x is equal to 0 y is 1 to this implicit solution you will have a solution that does not contain any arbitrary constant. So I may call this solution as an implicit particular solution because there are no arbitrary constants that could be seen written on it. Now based on the condition that we have, if we're let's say going to plot the family of curves represented by this implicit solution of the DE it would be something like this you have several curves having the same shape now if y is equal if y is equal to 1 when x is equal to 0 it would be something like this it's a particular solution now where does this particular curve fall on this family of curves this curve is this black curve in here you have a family of solution and a member of this family of solution is a curve, black curve, represented by this equation. So in this slide, you have learned how to separate variables. You have learned to distinguish an implicit from an explicit solution. You have learned the concept of the initial condition and the initial value problem. And lastly, you have learned the difference between the particular solution and the general or complete solution of your given differential equation. So should you have more questions concerning separation of variables, you can drop me a line in my chat box, in my email, and you can send me a private message through my messenger account. I hope everything here is clear, but nonetheless, your clarifications are welcome anytime as long as it's within office hours. So hopefully everything I have made clear. See you on our next topic in first order differential equations.